privilege and honor it is to be here this morning. It brings back so many, many deep emotions to be back at home. Uh, you know, at Journey Church, I always tell them, we have a home church, we have a home church, we have a home church. And they always say, Pastor, when are we going to the home church? <laughs> because we talk about the home church uh, and what a privilege it is um, to be here this morning. Uh, my husband is not here because he is at our church. Uh, we're going to have service in about 20 minutes, so he's there and he's uh, manning that. I think I have this, right? So I should turn it off. Is that better? No, thank you. So, uh, so please receive your lunch greetings from him uh, this morning, today. Uh, again, it's a privilege to be here. Thank you, Pastor Carlos. Thank you, Sylvia, for the leadership for having me. How many of you are ready to get into the Word this morning? Um, today I want to talk about being captivated, but going deeper, going deeper. And so my text today is going to be found in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47. And we're going to look at verses 3 to 12. And don't get scared, because I know Ezekiel is one of those weird books. Uh, but we're, we're going to get to a point. So Ezekiel, chapter 47, and we're going to be reading verses 3 to 12. Um, we are captivated by going deeper, by going deeper. Ezekiel 47, 3 to 12. The word of the Lord says like this, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and then led me through the water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and led me through the water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through the water where it was up to my waist. He measured off another thousand, but now the river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in a river that no one could cross. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees. And on each side of the river, he said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Araba, where it enters into the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the water will flow. There will be a large number of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So, the, so where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shores from the Engedi and to the Elgam, there will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like fish of the Mediterranean Sea. But the swarms and marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. Fruit trees and all kinds will grow on the both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing amen let us pray father i thank you for this opportunity to be able to speak your word thank you for your spirit that's in this place thank you lord because you, O oh Lord, are ministering to our hearts. And Father, we ask that your word that is powerful, like a double-edged sword, that it may penetrate into our hearts and into our mind, and that we, O oh God, may leave this place different than what we came in. We want to be changed. We want to be transformed. So I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you will do. Bless these people. You know their hearts and mind, O oh Lord. You know their need. Holy Spirit, speak into our lives this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. So today I would like to go uh, talk to you 
under the theme being captivated but going deeper with God. Allow me to give you some historical background on Ezekiel before we get into the actual message. Here we have, in a series of attacks, the Babylonian Empire overwhelmed the kingdom of Judah and they were carried away as captives in three waves. We know that there was an attack in 605 BC. This is where Jerusalem was attacked and many believe that this is where Daniel and his friends and other captives were taken to Babylon. Then there was another attack in 597 in where Jerusalem was attacked for the second time. And there the treasures of the temple uh, were taken and more captives were taken into Babylon. In 586 BC, Jerusalem finally falls and almost everyone who was remaining was taken captive and was exiled for the city of Jerusalem. Now Ezekiel was taken captive in the second attack in 597 BC. And he was among some of the captives that were taken to the river that's called Kebar. And he was taken as an exile. It was here where he received this powerful vision of God. And I want to tell you, Ezekiel is a book that's filled with strange imageries and visions. And it could be really difficult to understand as we study the book of Ezekiel. You know, some of the visions were so terrifying that it is a Jewish custom that Jewish men will not read the book of Ezekiel till they're 30 years old. Until they can really comprehend what it teaches. Here in chapter 47, I believe is a millennial vision. Revelations 22 verse 1 says, Then the angel showed me a river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb down the middle of the great streets of the city. On each side of the river stood a tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. I believe Revelations is talking about the river that Ezekiel had prophesied in the book, uh, uh, in his chapter 47. Ezekiel is envisioning a time when the Lord will bring about absolute healing in the nation of Israel. He is seeing a time when the river of God's grace, blessings, will flow from his throne and will refresh the promised land for the Israelites. While this is a prophetic word for the nation of Israel, and it's going to be literally fulfilled one day, there's an application that I would like to share with you today from this text. So if you allow me, I want to make a spiritual application to these verses for our lives this morning. Is that okay? What if I told you that God possesses a body of water... And that he wants you to get into that water. What if I told you that he wants you to get into that water so deep that the water overcomes you that you can't even swim in it? What if I told you that he wants you to give yourself over to the power of this river? To be swept away in its currents. That he wants you to get into a place where you are helpless and totally dependent on the river. Where a place where you are helpless, that you're at the mercy of the river. I want to tell you about a spiritual river that flows th through this world right now. I want to tell you about a river that brings refreshment, power, and glory right now. I want to tell you about a river that you can get into and you can go deep into it to the point where you're out of your comfort zone and out of control. John chapter 7 verse 37 says, On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. 
Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow within him. By this he meant the spirit, who those who believe in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. I want to tell you that streams of living water is available for you to go into and run into this river. This, time, this river that Ezekiel is talking about is a symbolism, is a typology of the Holy Spirit. There are three ways that this river represents the Spirit and His work in our lives. Number one, look at the river. The Bible says in Ezekiel 47, I'm back in Ezekiel. The Bible says that the source of this river, it comes from the throne of God. That means the Holy Spirit, like this river, came directly from the Father's throne. So the source is the same. Number two, the course of this river. The Bible says in Ezekiel 47 that from the altar, notice that the river came from the altar or the place where sacrifices were made. The water of life, the precious Holy Spirit comes directly from the altar of Christ's sacrifice on the cross. The Holy Spirit came only after the death of Christ on the cross. So it comes from the throne. Its course flows from the cross. And actually, let's look at the third thing. It's force. Notice that there are four great things about this river. Notice that there are four great things, truths that we can pick up from this river. Number one, the river had no feeder streams. That's important. There wasn't any other body of water that was feeding into this river. It only had one stream, the throne of God. There was no need for anything else to flow into this river. It was huge, powerful when it left the throne, it possessed everything it needed. There was no reason for any other body of water to supplement it. It was already as it should be. It had no feed or stream. Number two, we see that this river could heal. Look what the book of Ezekiel says. The river made the sea water pure when it flowed into it. I'm talking about a river that has the power to heal. Somebody got to say amen to that. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit in your life and in mine. He can heal the broken hearts. He can heal broken lives. He can heal broken dreams. He is a spirit who flows with healing power today. He specializes in fixing broken things. It's a river that heals. Not only is it a powerful river that comes for God, it's a, a, a river that can heal. And look, look at verse 9. It says that it's a river that could revive. <laughs> Everything the river touched was transformed with its life-giving power. Notice that in verse 9, it tells us twice that everything that the river touched will come to life. It has power to revive. When the Spirit of God moves into a life, there is a powerful renewal that occurs. When God moves in, He changes things. He can take what was dead and make it alive he can give what needs water and satisfy their thirst this water had a renewal po uh, power it would satisfy all quench and quench all thirst the holy spirit who's with us today the holy spirit that's here this morning the Holy Spirit that wants to heal you, but not only heal you, the Holy Spirit wants to revive you in your most dead areas of your life. 
I don't know about you, but there's areas where I need the Holy Spirit to touch my life. So that it can revive certain aspects of my mind and my heart and my hands. There's certain parts of my body, in my life, in my trajectory, in my journey. That we need the power of the Holy Spirit. So that it can heal. So that it can revive. And so that I can depend on that Spirit. On the Holy Spirit. All of these things picture the work of the Holy Spirit. It saves us, it renews us, it heals us, it lifts us. So the question is, now that we know that there is this water, now that we know that there's the Holy Spirit, now that we know that there's this river, the question is, how deep are we in the river of God? How deep are we in God's river? You see, as Ezekiel's vision The angel took Ezekiel and and he measured off a thousand cubits in the river. And as a result, each thousand, he was going from ankle to knee to waist until finally he was fully consumed in the river. You see, God wants to do the same thing in your life today. (laughs) Notice how Ezekiel... Uh, he, he, he's speaking into our lives today because he's saying, how deep are you in this river? Are you ankle deep? This represents, let me tell you, this represents the step of faith that saves the soul. People who are ankle deep have recognized that Jesus is Lord and Savior. They've given their hearts to the Lord and they've, they've been saved. And, they've, uh, and they're saved and they're part of the family of God. The ankle deep Christian is a person that actually stepped out of faith, faith and are saved by God. It's, it's great to be saved. But that isn't the end, my friends. Some of us are just satisfied by being saved. But God today is saying, how captivated are you? Are you willing To go deeper. Because being saved is just not enough. It isn't the end. He brought us out, but he wants to lead us deeper. (laughs) He brought us out of our sin so that he can lead us deeper into him. You know, many of us stop right here and we never go deeper. We never go farther with God. We just come to church. We say our hallelujahs. We pay our tithes and we leave. Sundays are just not enough anymore. In the world in which we live in, Sundays are just not enough. Church, we must go deeper. In the world in which we live in, where it's filled with so much false teachings and so many messed up ideas and so many messed up agendas. Touch me, go ahead. (laughs) This is Christine, by the way. (laughs) She's our treasure of our church. Did the mic fall in? Yeah, oh. So we have to pin it on your I see. Hold on. And this is on Facebook. <laughs> Appreciate that. How do you get back into this? <laughs> Ankle deep, right? <laughs> I'm so glad I'm home. <laughs> So in the world in which we live in, in the climate in which we are, in the world's economy, we cannot just be satisfied with coming to church on Sundays. It just doesn't work. Pastor used to say, I'm sure he still says it, the greatest service of the week is prayer service. Does he still say that? Yes. We tell our church that too. Pastor Victor tells the church, the greatest service of the week is prayer service. Why? Because we got to go deeper. We have to be captivated by God's love. Those who are ankle deep, don't go deeper. They're saved, but they refuse to grow. They spend all their time 
in the shallow ends of the water and they're afraid to go deeper. They miss the blessings of a deeper life. These people are in total, absolute control of their life. Did it fall again? Okay, no. These people are in total control of their lives. Ankle deep people. God is saying, how captivated are you? Are you ankle deep? Or are you knee deep? The knee deep speaks of prayer. This represents a life that is learning dependence upon the Lord. This is the person who prays and tries to live their life in faith before the Lord. These are the people who know what it is to feel the power of the river or feel the power of God. They feel how it rushes past them, but they're really not affected by it. They are standing on their own two feet, but they're still in control of their lives and they aren't being supported by the river. <laughs> I don't know about this, but I, 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 I've been to the beaches and I've been ankle deep and I've been knee deep in the beaches, right? We have a great story. I got to tell you one day, it's too long for me to tell you now, but you know, my family prides itself in being swimmers. Now, I don't know what Pastor Becky, what Pastor Danny, what Elise have told you, <laughs> but I'm here to set the record straight. I am the best swimmer in the family, okay? And every vacation, we have a swimming contest. And Danny, Elise, and Becky always cheat. I just want to say that. <laughs> we pride ourselves to being people of the water. My dad was, is a veteran. He was in the United States Navy for many years. So we were practically born in the waters. So we like being in the waters. And I know and I understand the book of Ezekiel. I understand the prophet when he says, you're water deep. But guess what? I'm still in control when I'm water deep. I understand when he says, you're, you're knee deep. Guess what? I'm still in control when the waves are blowing and coming. and I'm still in control when I am knee deep. I know the power of the current. I know how hard the wind waves can come. I know how hard the river can push, but I'm still in control when I am knee deep. You know the power, you feel the power, but you are still in control. God wants to ask you today, how deep are you in the river of God? Are you ankle, are you knee, or are you waist deep? This speaks of a person that has a spiritual experience with God. They have gone out to the river waist deep. They've gone deeper than they have gone in all of their lives. And we have felt and they feel the power of the rushing river. And, it, and its effects that it can have on their lives. As deep as this level is, there's still more. There's still a growth that can happen. And it's not still deep enough where God is calling us. This person who's at waist high in the river, their level of spiritual maturity is high. They know what it is to love. They know what it is to preach. They know what it is to share the gospel. They know what it is to, uh, what it is to love one another. But the problem is they are still in control. Even the river waist high, their feet are still planted and they're still in control. You know, and sometimes when you're waist high in the water, if the water comes and it's so strong, have you ever experienced this? You kind of take a couple of steps. But guess what? You're still in control. I remember and I know what it is to be in the river or in the ocean and the wave comes and it's a little powerful and wow, I'm moved by that wave, by that water. But guess what? I'm still in control. God is calling us to go even deeper.
He doesn't want you to have an emotional experience with him. He doesn't want it to be an experience of one service and then gone the next. He wants you to have a deep relationship with him. He wants you to be fully captivated to the point where you are overcome by the river. <laughs> it's at this point where Ezekiel reaches the place that he measures out and he gets to a point where the river is in total control of his life. It takes him where it will. He has no power. Over his destination. He is at the mercy of the river. <laughs> this is how deep God wants us to go. When you go out this deep, you have moved beyond your talents and abilities. Ezekiel was at the total mercy of the river. It goes beyond our talent and our abilities. You know, because some of us are really talented and have a lot of abilities and we depend on that every Sunday. <laughs> we come and we depend on our talent and our ability. I know. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a preacher. I know that I can come and preach at a church and it will go good and people will say, you did a great job. That's my talent and my ability. But God wants us to go further. I know Kinsley's a great musician. He's my friend, so I can do this to him. He's a great musician. I know that if, if his life got busy that week and he wasn't able to rehearse the songs, I know he has the talent and the ability to sit at that keyboard and still play great because he has that talent and ability. But God doesn't want us to be that way with him. He's saying you got to go deeper. You got to be so captivated that your talent and your ability no longer can help you. That means you got to push yourself into a place of the unknown, the uncomfortable, where you're just relying on the power of the Holy Spirit <laughs> and allowing yourself to be used in a way that you did not plan, that you did not rehearse, and that you have no idea what's going to happen next. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. God wants you to go deeper, beyond your ability and talent. He was at the total mercy of this river. But too, far too many of us, we like the safety of the shore. We like being ankle, knee, and waist deep. We like to be in control. The person who has reached this level has, it likes to keep the control. I don't know about you, but I'm a control freak. I know what it is. When things are out of control, it really gets to me. When I don't know what's going to happen next. But that's exactly where God wants us. Less of Gigi, more of God. Less of me and more of him. To the point where I have no idea what's going to happen. And it's okay. My life is in total chaos. I don't know which way to go. It's okay. Because God is a God that orders your steps. God is a God that is intimately involved in your life. God is a God that directs you and moves you. God is a God that convicts you and tells you which way you got to go. So if you don't know, it's okay. If you don't have control, it's okay. Please tell somebody, it's okay. Because the good news is that if you are in Christ, you are a child of God. And as a child of God, you have a loving father. Hallelujah. And he's never going to let you go. Somebody said today that he's never his love, no matter how high or how low you go. He's never going to let you go. So it's okay to lose control in the river of God. Some of us want to control our praise. <laughs> we want to control our worship, right? I don't want to raise my hand. What people are going to say? I don't, God says, lose control in the river of God. Because he is the father and he is all sovereign. 
And he is guiding and he is orchestrating a plan that you have no clue. He is working for your good. For those who are in Christ Jesus, he is working for your good. And so it's okay to go deeper. It's okay to lose control. It's okay to let the spirit just take you and let the river just move you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Oh, let me tell you, I know how scary it is. And this is my home church. I've been here since I was 16 years old. But when the Lord called me out of this church to go into some city called Bayonne, New Jersey, why? I have no idea. <laughs> Never even knew Bayonne existed. <laughs> go to Bayonne, New Jersey and start a church. You know how scary that was? Coming from a place like this. <sighs> to go and start this church, it was scary. It was beyond my talent. It was beyond my abilities. As a matter of fact, I had to close my eyes and preach and picture that there were people in the room because it was just my husband and a family. And I couldn't do it. So if you look at the videos, half the time my eyes are closed because I didn't know how to preach to one. And that's the journey the Lord had to put me through. Gigi, if you can preach to hundreds, if you could preach the thousands, that doesn't matter. Can you preach to the one? Can you preach to the one? And I had to learn that. And it was hard. Trust me. And I'm still learning. <laughs> but God is good. Today, Journey Church, just a little break here. One my Journey Church is now, we have about 100 people coming to our church every Sunday. Yeah. You know, I would dream about the day that I had 100 people. I would dream about that day. Just 10 years ago, I would, I would dream. I'm like, I can't wait till I see 100 people at our church. And now it's here, and it's just like, wow. This is what happens when you let God move you to the point where you lose your ability and talent, to the point where you're totally dependent on him. When you go out this deep, you lose that ability and that talent. This is the level of maturity that God wants us to be at. It is the coming to the end of me and the beginning to the everything of God. <laughs> it is where God is in total control. God doesn't want to take me where I can go. He wants to take me where I can't go, <laughs> where I won't go. God wants to take me so deep that I need to stop supporting myself and I need to now just depend on the water of God. There is a water, a place, a deepness, a profound relationship that God wants you to be with him that you are just floating away in the waters, just floating away. God wants us to go deeper. If you're truly captivated with God in your mind, in your heart, and in your hands, in your service, then this is the place where God wants you to be. This is how the Lord wants us. He wants us to lose sight of ourselves. He wants us to lose sight of our personal goals. He wants us to lose sight of our personal ambitions. He wants us to lose sight of our personal dreams. And he wants us to be totally, 100% surrendered to him and to the will that he has for our lives. God is looking for you to be so captivated that you're willing to surrender it all. Let me tell you, when you reach this level, when you wade in the waters this deep, you're happy that the river is carrying you away. You're happy that the will of God is happening in your life. There is a peace that passes all understanding that automatically comes. Why? Because you are moved in the river. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a peace of not having control. 
We think that control provides peace, but it's actually different. There's peace in not having control. This is where the river wants to take you, where God is in complete control of your life. My friends, the question today is, how deep are you in the river? How captivated are you with God? As believers of Christ, we are already in the river, right? We're part of the family. We're part of God's family. We're part of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells in, uh, inside of us. We're part of the river. But the question is, how deep are you? How deep are you in the river of God? How deep are you that you allow the Holy Spirit? Are you ankle? Are you knee? Are you waist? Or are you at the mercy of God? The deeper you go, the harder it is to jump out. You see, when you're ankle, knee, and waist, whenever you want, you could always jump back out. But the deeper you go into the river the harder it is to come out. <laughs> I love that. When you are knee and waist deep, it's just a short hike back to the shore, to the safety of the shore. But when you place yourself at the mercy of the river, it is a whole different ball game. It is a whole lot harder to get back out. What I'm saying is that when you are in an ever-deepening spiritual growth with God, I want to tell you that that is the place where he is in control and he will guide your steps and it will bring glory to the Father. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want my life to bring glory to the Father. But I can't be ankle and I can't be knee and I can't be waist. I need to be at the mercy of the Holy Spirit. Church, today, let's stand. We need a deeper walk with God. We need to be captivated by God. We need to go deeper with God. And so today is a real moment. This is just not another a uh, women's service, another special Sunday, not just another Sunday. This is a real moment. Yes. It's authentically a time when you can come before God and you can evaluate your life. You know, I know in church, people say that all the time. Evaluate your life with God. How, you know, how are you doing with God? And, and I know that we measure ourselves and we always fall short of where we think we should be. God is calling you to go deeper. Stop measuring yourself. Just lose control. <laughs> when you lose control, there's no measuring stick. It's all about what God wants to do and how he wants to push and move you. So the question, my friends, is today, where are you with God? And how deep are you with God? Are you ankle? Are you knee? Are you waist? Or do you want to be fully submerged into the river of God that he takes you to places that you never thought of, that you do things that you never thought you would do, that you would say things that you thought you would never say, that when you pray, miracles happen, things happen. Where are you? God is calling you. Are you captivated enough to go deeper? Are you captivated enough to go deeper? It's not enough to stay where we're at. We need to go deeper. We need to go deeper. So today is a real moment. It's a real moment where you can just say, God, take me deeper. I want to go deeper. And if you're anything like me, you want to go deeper there's I'm still not there yet but I want to grow I want to get there God is saying go deeper friend go deeper lose control don't forget about your plans forget about it God has it he has you 
Are you captivated enough to believe that? Are you captivated enough to just let loose? To just let loose? You know, when my nephew, Junior, when he was about maybe seven or eight years old or on a family trip, we went out into the ocean and we were going to go, I believe, snorkeling in an area. And we had to swim to get to that area. Junior said he wanted to come and we headed out from the boat. Halfway there, he says, I want to go back. I don't want to go. So being the good Titi that I am, I said, Danny, I'll take him back. Don't worry about it. And being Junior, he had a life vest. I did not. The arrogance of thinking that I'm a good swimmer. Junior has a life vest. I don't. We start swimming back to the boat. The boat is about maybe 100, 200 feet away. But the current had changed. And all of a sudden, now we were swimming against the current. And now it's just me and my nephew. And I'm struggling to swim. And I'm like, Junior, you got this, Bobby. Keep kicking. You got this. But in my mind, I'm saying, oh my goodness, the current is strong. We're never going to make it to the boat. And I said, Lord, give me the strength. And I was just swimming as hard as I could. And I was just trying to get to the boat because I knew that once I got to the boat, my nephew would be safe. I didn't care about me. I cared about him. And although he had a life vest, the current was really strong. And as great as I am, I felt short. And I was swimming. And I was swimming. You know, sometimes I believe that there's someone here who's just swimming against the current. And God is saying, come. Come deeper. And you're just swimming against the current that life has you. And there's things that are happening. And things are all against you. And you're trying. But God is there saying, come. I saw my mom at the boat. And she was saying, come. Swim. And I was swimming. Some of you are swimming against the current. I want to tell you. God says, keep going. Go deeper. Doesn't matter what happens. Go deeper. You're going to reach a place where all you have to do is flow in the water. Man, when I got Junior to that boat, all I did was flow in the water. And I said, thank you, Lord. And I just began to float because I reached the place where I lost control and I let God in control. Where are you today? Are you ankle? Are you knee? Are you waist? Do you want to go deeper? Do you want to be so captivated that you will go deeper? <laughs> I pray today that that's you that says, Lord, take me deeper. With your eyes closed today, with your heart surrendered today, with your thoughts surrendered to God today, I would love to pray for you. I would love to encourage you. I would love to journey with you. I want to help you through the current. I want to tell you, you can make it go deeper. Go deeper. God wants to use you. There's a plan. There's a purpose. Go deeper. Lose control in the spirit today. Lose control in the Holy Spirit today. Go deeper. Go deeper in God. In relationship. Go deeper. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you because you're awesome and you are mighty. We thank you because you are in this place. You know every heart. You know every mind. Father, today if there's anybody that needs to go deeper. <laughs> if there's anyone that is struggling against the current. If there's anyone that just needs to keep on fighting, Lord, right now, I pray for strength, for joy, for peace, for love, for understanding, for wisdom. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. 
I love you, Lord. I want to go deeper, God. I want to go deeper. It's not enough where I am. I want to go deeper. I want to go deeper. I want to lose control. I want to believe in you, God. I want to believe in you. I want to go deeper, God. I want to go deeper. I want to be so convinced, so captivated that I am deeper. I want to go deeper, Lord. If there's anybody that can join me and say I want to go deeper, come, 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 come. The Spirit of the Lord is here. And He wants to take you deeper. He wants to take you deeper. I want to go deeper, God. I want to go deeper, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our families need to go deeper. Our marriages need to go deeper. We need to go deeper. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 